In our last episode, we had a problem which I'd like to solve now. In the code, we asked our turtle to turn right by a number 0, 1, or 2 degrees, and then to prevent bias, uh, so that it will not be turning right all the time, uh, we asked it then to turn left uh, a random number of, of uh, degrees, 0, 1, or 2. Um, the problem turned out, as we calculated in the answers to the last video, that uh, it is more likely that this turtle will end up going straight than it is to go one degree to the right or left, and certainly more than uh, it is to going to two degrees to the right or left. In fact, there's a one-ninth chance that it will go left two degrees, or uh, clockwise, um, <clears throat> and one ninth chance that it will go right two degrees or counterclockwise. Uh, the problem is that it has a higher chance of going straight, uh, three ninths or one third. So let's try to solve that so that it is equal probability of going any one of the th of the five different headings that it could go minus two, minus one, zero degrees, one degree, or two degrees uh, uh, turned in this particular action. So there are five possibilities and we want equal probabilities for each of them. Now if there are five possibilities then it would make sense to use the random function with the value 5. Let's actually try to do that. Let's get rid of the left random 3 and we want to choose a number um, of five possibilities 0 through 4. Once having choos chosen tho those, we can fix it up so that it is not biased exclusively to turn to the right. If we take that, take that number, and we subtract from it a value of 2, then we will have the following possibilities. If random 5 gives us a value of 0, then and we subtract 2, that gives us a, minus, a value of minus 2. And then if random 5 gives a value of 1, we subtract 2, and it gives a ma value of minus 1 total. And all the way up to random 5 giving us a 2, and subtracting us a 2, that gives us a value of 0, or straight ahead. And then all the way up to 4. Uh, random 5 gives us a 4, and we subtract 2, and that gives us a value of 2. And we have five equally probable possibilities, from minus 2 uh, to 1, minus 1, to 0, to, to 1, and to 2, and from whatever heading, that's the amount that we turn. And this gives us a completely unbiased series of possibilities. We go back here, and we set everything up, and we turn down the speed, and we go a little faster. and we're doing fine. So, we go back to the code, we see that we can actually do some arithmetic. NetLogo will do arithmetic for us. I want to spell out the cardinal rule of creating expressions like this in NetLogo. And that is, around each arithmetic operator, like the minus, there must be at least one space on either side. If you don't do that, if you leave no space, for instance here and here, which to the human eye uh, makes no difference and seems like a completely correct expression, then when we check the system we get an expected command, we get a, an error message. Uh, so we have to put in at least one space. More than one space is also fine, fine and NetLogo will ignore any additional spaces. And so, when we check this, this is also perfectly fine, although it doesn't look very good. Now, let's go back to this notion of expressions. We can write arbitrary arithmetic expressions here. If we want, we can do some strange things. For instance, we can multiply this. The asterisk is the multiplication operator. We can multiply this by 23 if we want. And then we can divide that by 14.5, uh, so the decimal values are perfectly fine, and uh, we can create any expression that we like, and NetLogo will in fact calculate it perfectly fine. It would take this random 5, and 
uh, gives us a value between uh, 0 and 4 and then from that it will subtract 2 and then it will multiply that by 23 and divide it by 14.5. We can actually check this out by using NetLogo simply as a calculator. Suppose we want to find out what 2 plus 2 is uh, and we get easily a value of 4. Uh, NetLogo, of course, can do uh, arbitrary set of arithmetic operations. We can print 34 times 3 divided by 18.797 and we get the following value. You should be able to check that on a calculator if you like. There are other mathematical functions that you would probably expect to be built into a, a um, computer language. Uh, for instance, the square root function. We can take the square root, which is abbreviated SQRT, of the value 4, and we all know that to be 2. And of course, we can do that with uh, numbers that are don't come out as exact um, integers, like the square root of 2, for instance. Um, we can group expressions, arithmetic expressions, uh, uh, with the use of parentheses. Um, always use these parentheses, the, the open and close parentheses. Uh, never use the square brackets. That's, that means something very special in NetLogo. So if we want to multiply um, the uh, 5 minus 3, notice the spaces around the arithmetic operator, but you need not have spaces around the parentheses, times 2. We should get 4, because that's 2 times 2, and indeed we do. So grouping using parentheses is perfectly fine. What I'd like you to do now is to try some of the exercises.